Hello everyone. Good evening. Good evening, guys. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Shall we start our class? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Okay. Fine. So yesterday we launched two instances, right? One in Mumbai region, and the other one is in London region. Uh, okay, let me install those two instances today, so that you know we can work. Yeah, this is my Mumbai instance. Start and go to London. It also let me start this instance. And GitHub also is right. Yesterday we created one repository. The repository name is Central Repository. Central repo, right? These are okay. Yesterday we pushed one file, right? That is this one. Now let's go inside these instances. Let me rename this one. Mumbai is it? <coughs> then let's go into London instance also. Change the color of this one. Now, whenever you want to execute multi, you know, same command in multiple machines, you can make use of this one, multi execution, so that you know you can execute commands in both machines in one go. Not necessary, guys. Okay, if you want, I would recommend you to run commands independently, individually. Plus, minus. Yeah, that's it. Now exit. So I, I think yesterday we have discussed till here, right? Uh, yeah, let me show you. Just one minute. Okay, so yesterday we have same till here. Okay, let me give a quick recap of yesterday's class. We launched two instances. In both instances, we installed Git. You can see Git is there in both instances. Oh 
Just one minute, it's not working at all. Just one minute, just one minute. Hmm, yeah, it is working. Okay. Actually, the diagram is right. Actually, I have to finish in one class. So that's the problem, actually. Yeah. So guys, now, can you see my screen, everyone? Please respond. Yes, yes. I. Yes, right? yes. Okay. yes, I. Okay, fine. Yes. So yesterday, we have seen till here. Let me give a quick recap. Yeah. So we launched two instances in two regions. So Sai launched one instance, Hari launched another instance. And we installed Git in these two instances. Then we created one account, GitHub account. You know, team lead has created one account. Then he has created one central repository. And after that, Sai, he created one directory named Mumbai Git. Then by entering into the directory, he initialized Git. Then this directory became Git repository. Then uh, Git that Git repository means in in that three stages got created. One is work directory, and one is staging area, and one is local repo. In that local repo, we got one branch called main. By default, name would be master. That one we renamed into main, right? Then we created one file. Sai has created one file. He kept some data. Then he is added. Then he committed. So we got one commit. Then after that, you know, we he connected for the first time. He communicated this Mumbai EC2, this local repository with the central repository. So for that, first we need to connect. Then he pushed. So when he pushed, this file went to here and this commit went to here, this location. Okay. That's what actually happened. That's what we did. Right? Okay. 
Now let me show you. Here, do ls. This is our Git repository. Go inside this one. See guys, whatever commands you run, make sure that you are running inside that repository only, not outside. Now, if you do ls, you can see in its workspace, we have one file uh, having one line of code. You can see small content is it. That's what we kept yesterday. Then uh, if you run git log, you can see commits. It shows commits. So we have only one commit, correct? If you want to see the data inside commit, it show and give commit ID. You can give entire commit ID or you can give first seven characters. That is more than enough. So you can see this is the data that is there inside this commit. Then this one we push it to central repository. Correct. So that's why you can see the same file here having the data. And we have one commit is here. You can see here we have one commit. Right. I hope you understood. Till here. Okay. Now. Uh, now assume that, see, Sai did this, he has written code from morning till afternoon. Now he thought of adding some more work from afternoon till night. He thought of, you know, uh, adding some more data. Okay, some more content. Now let's see how it is going to work. See here. Now in the same file, Sai is adding added some code. You can see one more line of code. Many lines he has added some more data. So let's add some data. Okay, open that file, VA, my file. In that, so you're adding one more line. So second line. Second line from Mumbai by Mr. Sai. Some more data I have added. Okay, some more code. Now let's come out of this one. That's it. Now I don't know what is the status of the file. I don't know what is the status. Okay, whether that data is only in work directory or whether it is staging area or local repository, I don't know. So to verify, we have a command that is git status. Git status. See here, now it is showing modified. In previous class, yesterday's class, it was showing like, you know, uh, untracked. But now it is showing modified. Why? Because git, git, it knows about that file because already in previous class we have added and committed. Now, git git knew about that file and the first line of code. What git doesn't know is the pink color code, pink line of code, it doesn't know because just now we have added, right? That's why git is saying that, Sai, something you modified that file, something you modified today, but I don't know what is the modification. It is saying that something you did, but I don't know what is that modification. Okay, now what we are going to do, let's add. So when I add that extra data only will go here. That means it takes a snapshot for that extra data. Okay, so let's add for that command is git add, either you can give file name or dot. Now run git status. Now what is the status? Now you can see it is saying green color means yes, git took snapshot for that extra data. It took snapshot for that extra data. But what Git is saying, hey Sai, I have taken snapshot, but you have to commit in order to save that snapshot. So what we are going to do now, let's commit. Okay. So when I commit, automatically the data will come here, automatically. Okay, let's commit. So how to commit? The command is, git commit minus m second term whatever message you want you can that is up to you that's it we committed it is saying that sai one line one file changed you change that file what you modified just you inserted one line 
Now run git status. If you run git status, it is showing that, hey, nothing is there. Sorry, whatever file is there, what data is there in workspace that I already have added and committed. So everything is clean, nothing to commit, nothing new to commit. Working tree, everything is clean. So right now we committed. That means that commit is here, you can see, right? So if you want to see list of commits, yeah, you know, right? The command git log. Git log shows all commits. Git log. It shows all commits. See, latest commit, latest commit will be always at the top. This is latest commit. You can see second commit. There is a older commit, yesterday's commit. Now this commit is having one ID. This got generated based upon the data present inside that file. What are extra data we have added? Pink color data. Now this commit also having, you know, my name, you know, email ID, date, time, stamp, everything. If you want to see the data present inside this commit, command is git show in this commit ID. Git show commit ID. Now you can see it is saying that, hey, Sai, in this commit, this is the data which is there. You can see green color plus symbol. What is this? It is saying that Sai, this data is there in previous commit, but in this commit, this data is there. Okay, that is how. So, this particular ID got generated based on this data. Got it? That is how. Okay, that's fine. Now, what we do? We need to push. So we need not to connect. Connection is only once. Okay, already we connected yesterday. So when you push automatically, you know, see here. When you push automatically, see that file, you know, what to, uh, these, you know, the file data will go there and commit also will go there automatically. See here, right, I'll show you. This one equal to this one, this one equal to this one. So whatever pink color is there in that file that went and sit inside that file, whatever extra commit is there that, that is here. Okay. That is so it, it happened, right? Okay. So let's push. We haven't pushed it yet. Let's push. How to push that already you know. Git push or is in main. Git push or is in main. Enter. So when you push, you have to give your email ID. And you have to give token. You know, right? Uh, password will not work. You have to give token. So the token is there. Yesterday I kept in my keys folder. Let me paste. Enter. That's it. See, it's 100% successful. Push it from main branch to main branch. Now everything is fine. How to verify? Yeah. So before hitting refresh, you can see it is showing only one commit. Right? But as and when I hit refresh, you can see how many commits? Two commits. And what is the data present inside the file? Second line of code. So in that file, second line of code is there. And how many commits are there right now? We have two commits. You can see. This was yesterday's commit. You can see yesterday. And this is today's commit. You can see the date and all. If you want to see the data present inside this today's commit, just click on that commit. Yes, you can see it is saying that, hey, Sai, in this commit, only this line is there. Only this line. You can see plus symbol that took highlighted with green. But this is related to previous commit. That's what it is saying. For us to understand easily, they are giving previous commit data also. Okay, that's it. So now Sai has finished his work. Okay, it's night. Sai has finished his work. Now it's time, you know, it's time to hurry to start his work. For us, it is night. So for, for Hari, it is morning, right? Now he's going to start his work. So before he start his work, what he's going to do? First, he's going to connect, guys. Okay. Let me show you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. 
already we installed git yeah everything is fine okay so now he is going to create that uh, directory okay let me create one directory you can see he is going to create one directory okay so for that he is going to give a name called london git london git after creating the directory he will go inside the directory and he will run one command that is git init by going inside the directory he will run one command that is git init as and when he runs that command automatically this folder will be divided into three stages as you know what are those stages one is work directory or you can call workspace second one is a staging area or you can call indexing area stage or index and third one is local repo and you know that inside local repo one branch will be created okay the branch by default the name is going to be master but yes as you know that we are going to rename that one into main that's what they are suggesting us by default these things will be there okay so let's do it let's create this directory okay and uh, we'll go inside the directory and we'll we'll run git in it okay let's do it this be in here so see here i am inside london git okay london git now mkdir sorry i am inside london ec2 instance okay london git i am creating one folder called london git now go inside that folder okay now here i am going to run git in a git in it initializing it that's it we have initialized git okay fine something see you can see that saying that hey change the branch name and now okay now anyways we are going to okay so when you initialize git if you do ls hyphen a you can see local repository is now what we are going to see here we don't have anything except local repository we don't have anything now hari is not going to create any file guys okay hari is not going to create any file first hari is going to connect because for the first time you know he is communicating with this central repository right so that's why he is going to connect you can see for the first time This is only one time effort. Okay, it's good. Connect. So how to connect? For that, you know, right? We use one command. First, listen, guys. Listen, listen. Doubts. Anyway, I'll take your doubts first. Listen carefully. Okay. Yeah. So here to connect, command is git remove add. Git remote add or is it because C is also uh, connect he is also going to connect central repository with same shortcut name but if he wants he can give some other name in place of or is it or is it Git remote add or is it now we need that central repository URL from where we'll get yes here you can see code is right if you click here code you can see HTTP there is a link just click here if you click here yes that will be copied now paste. So git remote add or is in central repository is you are now enter. That's it. We have added successfully. Now, just what he's going to do? He's going to run git pull. Only one command he's going to run. You can see. He's going to run one command that is git pull. As and when he runs that command. Pull command immediately, automatically, immediately and automatically, that file will come here. You can see, and here also that will come, but you can't see it there. And with the data also, you can see here. Here data will be there. Here also will be there that you can't see, and that commit automatically, and also. The second line of code also definitely can hold this. Here also you can see second comment. 
Okay, and you know, right? What is the file name? That is my file. So it happens automatically. Okay, let me show you. Let me show you. See, if you if I do ls, I don't have anything as of now. If I do git log, nothing is there. We don't have anything, right? Okay, you don't. It's, that's what he's saying. You don't, you don't have any commits. That's what he's saying. Yeah, that's right. Now I'm going to run git pull. I'm going to run git pull origin git pull origin main git pull origin main. That's it. We pulled. Okay. So we pulled right now to ls. You can see the file automatically that came here. Now open that file. You should be able to see two lines of code. Okay, my file. That's how Hari will verify. Okay, that file is having some data kept by Mr. Sai. That's all. Now, how many commits are there? Git log. Yes, two commits are there. Now, Hari will understand that, okay, these commits belongs to Mr. Sai. And if he has any queries, he will contact Mr. Sai by using this email. That is how we have to set name and email ID. Otherwise, how does Sari come to know that, you know, these commits belongs to Mr. Sai? Correct. That's all. Okay. Now everything is fine. The only thing that, you know, Hari has to do that is mandatory is verify git branch. What is showing? Master. Because by default, it shows master. See, git pull origin main means from central repository is main branch we pulled. From main branch we pulled, but current local branch is master only showing. So we have to rename. So how to rename? Git branch hyphen capital M. Or you can use small m also. That's up to you. Now it is fine. Now do git branch. Yes, successfully we renamed. Got it? That is so actually it works. Okay. Now if Hari wants to see the data, yes, he can run git show commit ID. He can verify the data. That's all. Or he can see the data inside the file also. Okay. Now Hari is planning to add some more data because it's time. It's a Hari's turn, right? He pulled existing code. Now he's going to add some more code on top of that. So for that, he's here. First, he's going to add. He kept some code from morning till evening. Then after that, he's going to add. Then after that, he's going to, he's going to commit. When he commits automatically, that data will come. Correct? Let's go see here. This is what adding. And this is what committing. Let me write here. And this is what commit. And commit every time anyone commits, we will get committed. So let's see how he is going to add some data. Simple. See here, open that file VI, my file. Okay. Now we can see Hari is going to add some data. So this is by Mr. Hari. That too from London. That to third line. Correct. That's it. Third line from London by Mr. Hari. Hari has added some data. Yeah, let's exit. Now again, if he wants to see the status, git status. He's saying that Sai, yeah, I know about the file and that first two lines. But what I don't know is, I mean, Hari, what I don't know is just now you added some data, you modified that file. I don't know what is the modification. Now git add dot. Now verify. Yeah, now git understood that modification. Git took snapshot for that extra line of code. Now he is going to commit. Hari is going to commit. Git commit hyphen m. Something. Okay, third commit. Third commit. Done. Now verify how many commits are there total? Git log. Total three commits. See, latest, latest commit belongs to Mr. Hari. You can see. And older commits belongs to Mr. Sai. That's all. See, Hari commit, he committed, right? He has having, it is having his name, 
his email id and the date time stamp and all everything now if he wants to see the data which is there inside this commit command is git show git show and this commit id you can see now we can verify okay it is saying that sai hari in this commit this line of code is this line this related to previous commits okay in this commit this particular code is yeah that's fine now what hari is going to do hari is going to push see guys here in hari's machine total three commits are there and in that file total three lines of code is there correct three commits and three lines of code okay now what hari is going to do hari is going to push once he finish his work he is going to push you can see is going to push as and when he runs a push command immediately that extra data will go there here in that file and that commit will go here automatically let's run push command before i run push command you can see here that file is having only two lines of code and only two commits are there now let's run push command git push okay or is in main git push or is in main enter that's it so these credentials are there with hari also it have credentials so hari is going to enter these credentials and the token also with hari same so he is going to pay this token that's it Yeah, successfully Hari has pushed hundred percent successful main to main. Now go and verify. Before I hit refresh, you can see it is two commits. Now hit refresh. Yeah, how many commits are there total? Three commits are there, and that file is having three lines of code. And how many commits? Three commits. Yes, you can see. third commit right that is so now if you want to see the data inside that commit yes you can see it is saying that sai hari has added this particular line of code okay now sai will start his work hari finish his work no sai will start his work now before sai starts his work he has to pull this he has to there is no option without pulling he cannot push he has to push i mean he has to pull first those conditions i am going to explain just in our next classes okay now sai is going to pull when he runs that pull command automatically that extra data whatever is there that data will come here and that will come here automatically that will come here okay so let's run pull command there you can see here now open that file vi my file we have only two lines of code and how many commits are there we have only two and two commits now let's run git pull or is in main No give. Okay. See, while pulling, no need credentials, guys, because our repository is public repository. Correct. So while pulling, you you need not give any credentials. While pushing only, you have to give credentials. While going inside the address, only you have to show your ticket. While coming out, no need. Correct. Yeah. Now you can see it is saying that yes, one line has added like that. Now if you want to verify, open that file. Cat my file. You can see three lines of code. Now git log. How many commits are there? Total three commits. Now Sai will read, will verify this commit. Okay, by seeing that Sai will understand that okay, this commit belongs to Mr. Hari because see it is having his name, his email ID, and everything. And if he wants, we can verify the data which is there inside that commit by running the simple command called git show commit ID. Okay. 
Now I'll show one one final. Okay, from here to there, one final push. Now what Sai is going to do? Sai is going to add some more data. You can see. Yeah, you can see Sai will add some more. Data. Then after adding, he will add. He will he runs add command. Then he will commit. Then he is going to push. When he runs that push command, automatically the data will go. In. You can see that's it. So let's do it now. Okay, vi my file. Then okay, this so. So who is adding data, Mr. Hari? Sorry, Sai only, right? Sai from Mumbai. This is fourth. Okay. Now come out. Then he is going to add. And he is going to commit. So git is all about mainly add, commit, and push. Minus m give commit message. This is fourth commit. Then he is going to push git push. Or is in main. Then credentials. Then the token. And that's it. None push successfully. Now go and verify. Hit refresh. Yeah, total four commits are there. Right? That file is having four lines of code and four commits. You can see those commits. You can see four commit by Mr. Sai. And if you want to see the data. In this commit, we have added this data. So now we, you know, if you want, you can go back and you can get older data. You can see, if you want the entire data, you can get from the file. But if you want commit size, version wise, okay, yes, you can go to commits. You can verify which commit data you want. You can get. One more thing, I'll tell you. See, even if you delete file, suppose see. Here, even if I delete the data, if I add and commit, but still these commits will be available always. No one can delete these commits, first of all. We can delete the file. Okay, but no one can delete these commits. That's why always your data is pretty safe in the form of commits. See guys, we don't want data in the form of file. We want the data in the form of commits so that we can go back to older commit or older version. We can get our data back. Let me give you one thought, which anyways I'm going to explain. Suppose, now if I delete all four lines of code now, if I delete, then when I add, when I add automatically, these four will be deleted. When I commit, one new commit will be generated for the deleting data. It, it doesn't have anything, it will not have anything. Just it shows that yes, you have deleted. Then when you push, new commit will be there. These lines will be deleted. It's not always adding the data, guys. It's also editing, deleting, and all. But see, whether you have this file present or not, always you will have these commits available. So whenever you want, you can get your commits back anytime. So, so we don't need data in the form of file. We need data in the form of commits. That is very, very important. Okay. So that's why we use Git because we want the data in the form of commits. That's what we can call versions. So that at any point of time, we can go back and get older commits data. That as for the date and time wise, that is the reason it became so popular. Okay. So this is general workflow of Git. Now here you might be having many doubts. I, two people are fine. What if multiple people, they work, how it is going to work? Yeah. That you'll understand in next, you know, two, uh, two to three classes. Okay, so slowly, slowly we are we we are you know learning all these things. So slowly you learn, you know, within two to three days you'll understand that. But when multiple people they work together, 
because before that you must know many git concepts in git we have so many small small topics aren't there like you know git ignore uh, git branch git conflict okay n number of things are the git revert git reset editing deleting modifying how to create other branches how to push to other branches how to pull from other branches so n number of topics are there slowly we'll discuss all those things then later on automatically you understand when multiple people they work how they are going to manage as a team set okay so this is workflow let me write here git architecture you know git workflow so what I'll, i'll do i'll today i'll share the screenshot because by seeing the screenshot you should understand everything git workflow okay. yeah so uh many small small topics are there uh, those uh, we are going to discuss from next class onwards uh, this is the most important section of git i mean other topics also important but this is the most important section if you understand this much then you know remaining topics are pretty easy okay those you will understand easily okay yeah so now if you here if you have any doubts you can ask me here.